Just when you think that the camera work can't get even more shoddy, we got gas cans and herbicide sprayers in the background. Oh yeah, it's another review video. Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside me today. Today we're talking about IWOM, interior warmth, outer mobility, which I won't lie, I had no idea that's what it stood for, I just knew it as IWOM, and why I think it's actually a really good purchase, in particular if you already have pre-hung sets. Is it for the mobile hunter though? That's what we'll find out today here in this review video. But real quick, IWOM in how it works and the build of it, regardless of whether it's the IWOM or the heater bodysuit, it's trapping heat from your toes to your head all in one continuous thing. Kind of like you're actually just in bed under a blanket or on the couch under a blanket. As long as you're able to kind of lock body heat in from the toes up, you don't need nearly as much uh, individualized insulation, which is something I use this year with the Arctic Shield boot covers that I bought. It actually worked because my entire foot was being able to transfer heat to the rest of my foot. It weren't, wasn't just the toes and the toe of the boot, the arch and the heel. All the heat that was generated was being encapsulated, just like you on the couch under a blanket. All of it was being encapsulated and redistributed and keeping my entire foot warm, which is something that I've never really experienced before. The IWA or a heater body suit, I think the IWOM is a little bit better, and we'll get into the reasons as to why here in a little bit. But the exact same idea, trapping heat from the toes to the head, redistributing it, you don't need nearly as much insulation and nearly as many layers, and particularly directly on your body, which means you can hike in without wearing the suit or wearing it in parka mode, we'll get to that here in a minute, and then you can just pop it right on, you don't have to sweat going into your stand. You just basically wear your light layers, wear your very thin base layers, get to your set, and then put the suit on, and then you're warm, and then when you're done, you just roll it up, put it back into duffel bag mode that I have here, or back into parka mode, and you can be on your way. So we're in my garage for two reasons. One, because it's really stinking cold outside, and I've been having some technical issues with the temperature on the camera equipment, but we're still gonna try to venture outside later anyway, and see if we can get this to work. But also, I have enough floor space here because this thing is huge, because IWOM is built to your size of your body. I'm six foot four, 215 pounds, and so when mine got ordered, it's specifically ordered to fit people that are very close to my size range. This isn't just a one size fits all, small, medium, large. There are actually many different sizes to fit many different body types and styles. So I'm gonna back the camera up, zoom it out even more, lay this whole thing out on the floor, and you can see it fully in action before I even put it on. Okay, so here we have it in duffel bag mode right now. And this is not lightweight, I'm not gonna lie. It definitely has the full insulation, but it's also a full set of clothes in one thing. However, that it's its own self-contained duffel. There is nothing on the outside. So when you actually go to pop this open, it unfolds off of itself. And it's a little bit of a chore to get it back inside of this duffel system. But once it's in there, it stays in there. So this portion here with the duffel that I just unfolded is the foot portion. Okay. We'll flip the whole thing over. And here you have the full suit and we'll work from the top down. So you have naturally, as you would expect, the entire length is what's basically a giant sleeping bag. You have a full zipper from all the way up to your neck down to uh, your abdomen where there is an integrated hand muff here. And as I put this on, we'll explain a little bit more about it. You do have a uh, soft knit lining on the inside, fully insulated all throughout the sleeves. The sleeves do have thumb holes for the interior liner on both sides. The hood, it's a double hood system. You have an insulating hood right here, which when you fully zip this up, even has an area for your mouth and nose to breathe, so you don't fog up your glasses like I have, or you can just kind of not get all that icy condensation on the inside. You then have what I would call a weather hood, uh, much thicker, uh, much larger, basically meant just to shed water, even has that exterior uh, extra lip there on the front, and of course has Velcro. Now the thing I forgot to mention on both sleeves, you do have Velcro here around the cuffs to tighten that up to match however you want to wear it. I really uh, appreciate the fact they put thumb holes in here, and you'll see why when I go to put this on in a little bit. Down here, moving down towards closer to the torso, you do have two hand zip pockets here on the uh, outside. If you don't want to use the muff here, you can stick your hands in here. These pockets, although there are several pockets, 
These pockets specifically do not connect to the inside. So you can't access your street clothes or your inner layers on the inside that you are wearing. These are only connected to the bodysuit. These pockets here on the outside, however, is a two layer pocket system. There is a zip here for the exterior uh, cargo pocket on both sides, but then there are also brass snaps that allow you to access your clothes on the inside. So you, I can you know, wear a pair of, um, I don't know, sweatpants or something on the inside, and I have a pocket in here to keep my phone or something. I can reach all the way through the suit and access my clothes on the interior. That's gonna become very important a little bit later on. Here in the front, we do have a zip for this exterior uh, pocket, which is very deep. It's not just a hand warmer pocket. You see how far that goes. Again, this is not an, in, an access to the inside of the bodysuit to your street clothes. This is just an access pocket on the outside. I kind of wish it was a little bit shallower, so it would be kind of like uh, just a... Um, uh, like a hand warmer pocket, but it is what it is. The muff, very nice. It's very tight. Uh, it's a little bit better when you actually have the bodysuit on. Lots of insulation here. It's not big. Uh, lots of good elastic here around the cuffs to give you a decent air seal, which is really nice. They have this random pocket down here on the uh, bottom right. This also accesses inside. If I get my hand out, this also accesses the inside here. It's only on the right-hand side, not on the left. Don't know exactly what that reason's all about, but it is an interior access pocket as well. Moving all the way down to the bottom and to the foot portion, you see that it is zipped off. So when you actually go to put this on, you will uh, unzip this. It does have a waterproofing uh, rough material on the bottom, so that way when you're standing on stand or on a platform, uh, you're not getting uh, rain and snow. When you actually open it up, this is also a PVC type material that is waterproof. So that way if you get uh, mud and dirt and debris and snow in here, it's not just gonna soak up the entire inside of your system. And will also allow you to kind of wipe this dry when you go to fold it back up to put it in duffel bag mode or put it back on in parka mode so you can walk in and out of the woods. So you see, still have that continuous knit lining from all the way from the top of the head all the way down to the feet until you get to where your feet actually go into the system. Once your feet actually go into the system on stand, you'll then of course just zip it right back up and it starts that encapsulation of the heat from your head to your toes. All right, so here up fully next to me, like I said, I'm six foot four, 215 pounds. You can see the full scale of this thing. Definitely lots of baggy room, so that way you can maneuver it on and off your body a lot simpler. I am wearing my saddle, my tethered Phantom, and all the bells and whistles. I don't do dump pouches. Here my lineman's belt is on the front, and I have my retractable gear hoist here on my back right hip, so that way you can see me pulling this on and off. Now, like I said, there's two ways to do it. You can do it in the duffel bag mode, which what I just had there, and you can do all of this right at the base of the tree, but you still have to put it in parka mode in order to climb the tree. So I now I've got it hiked up real nice and real high, and the foot portion is gonna hang back here, and that's okay. I don't have a problem with that hanging back here. Once we get everything cinched up, it'll be all right. Find my strap here, and I'm just gonna start cinching. And I'm just gonna start pulling and cinching and pulling and cinching. Taking my time again. Once that is all the way cinched over real tight and high above my hips, I'm going to go ahead and fold it over nice and tight. And then this is going to fold down over top of itself. And you're going to look like a giant camouflage marshmallow. But at least you're a giant camouflage marshmallow that's comfortable. Now, I still have full mobility, okay? And yes, I look absolutely ridiculous out here on the back end in particular but I can still wear my pack. This is my 3V Gear Outlaw 2 Sling Pack. I even have the hydration bladder in here. This bag is packed to the nines for the purpose of this video, even though I haven't been hunting in quite some time. Here we are the second week of February. Still there, we can even get the stability strap. And it fits exactly the same as if I was wearing my large coats, like my Sika Fanatic or my Huntworth, uh, winter gear in the uh, extra heavyweight. So I look ridiculous. I still have access though to my hand muff, which is kind of nice because <laughs> it can be cold when you're just walking to and from your stand. You can still sling a rifle over your shoulder. You can still carry your bow. No problems here. I could even put my climbing sticks like I usually do over my other shoulder and have them hanging down here. No problem. I still also have access to the sling pack as it's supposed to be intended to be used. So when I'm actually ascending the tree, and we'll talk about this later when we actually step outside, 
I'd still have full access to my sling pack, just if, like if I was wearing my Sitka Fanatic jacket. So lots of bulk, but it's not unmanageable. All right, so let's actually go outside. Hopefully nothing breaks down electronically in the teens of temperatures we have out here. Let's get out there and let's see if we can actually use this in both a tree stand and a saddle format. And spoiler alert, you can with both. All right, so it's now a few weeks later. We can't seem to catch a break here in Pennsylvania. It's now going on the second week of March. I filmed that over a month ago, but it's nice because I've been able to actually try it. Uh, but audio has just been brutal. We still have 15, 20 mile an hour winds today. Real feel is still in the teens. I have my microphone here on the back side of the tree and hopefully it picks up good audio and hopefully halfway decent video and we can show you this IWAM here in action. So right now I have all my gear in the tree because it's just simpler just to have that. Obviously this backpack would be on my back. I would have my lineman's belt, which I will get out here in a second. Uh, and then of course I have my hiss strap. Now this tree is quite large, uh, almost two feet, if not two feet in diameter. Uh, definitely 18 inches here at a minimum and so my hiss strap I find that uh, if I'm going to lean or if I'm going to be in the tree I'm, I'm more or less uh, leaning than I am kneeling or in the sitting position with my knees up against the tree uh, and usually I run my tether much lower I've actually ran at more collarbone height this past season in 2020 and I liked it there a lot so this hiss straps up decently high and this is out but the hiss straps up here so I can get my mic pack uh, up here and I can get my tether out of the way but it's still it's is going to serve its purpose for what we have here so my pack would still be here although just having ascended the tree it usually wouldn't be but i just want to here just to show you any inconvenience that i would have utilizing the iwam the way it's supposed to be so let's just go through this so right now it's in park mode again you're not going to win in a beauty contest here having this in park mode uh, but it was very comfortable you know i'm here on piece of public i'm not that far away uh, from the parking lot here uh, and my vehicle just a couple hundred yards and nothing has shifted weird uh, nothing is is out of the ordinary everything's really comfortable and working really well so basically now I'm just gonna get my lineman's belt out here all right so here we officially would be with our lineman's belt which is almost actually out to the tag and this tree is huge I've got myself really far away from the tree because of the backpack but I also am gonna need it in order to maneuver the IWAM here in a minute so going back to those interior uh, pockets that are accessible from the exterior that allow you to get into your under layer of clothes, that's what we're gonna be utilizing here in order to tether into the actual tree itself. So in order to do that, you have to have a saddle that has a movable bridge or not a fixed bridge on both sides. Basically, I'm using the tethered Phantom and it has a fixed bridge on both sides. It uses a Prusik knot with the AM steel so you can adjust the length of your bridge. And it's an awesome saddle setup, but it doesn't work with the IWAM. I have to have a an, uh, one side is adjustable. So that's what I have here. I have a secondary carabiner to a makeshift bridge that I've made. So here I have this makeshift bridge here. This knot looks terrible. I'm not trusting this. Although this is eight millimeter accessory cord, I use it on my DIY sit drag saddle uh, without a single hitch. It's plenty strong for what I'm trying to do with it. Uh, but here it's just kind of daisy chained up rather ugly. Uh, and then I have a bowline here on this side. I'm going to reattach it. I will when I go to put this uh, out of park mode and start to actually utilize the saddle correctly, uh, I will go ahead and take that off and, and start going with it. So in order to get to the bridge and get off my lineman's belt and get onto my tether, I'm going to take this out of park mode. Now I'm going to try to do this with gloves on because A, it's stinking cold, but also just to see the mobility of it. The biggest problem that I'm having with IWAM is that because of all this extra fluff up here, it, it's a lot of feel, which is okay if the weather's halfway decent <clears throat> or if you're going to do this rather quickly. But I'm wearing these heavyweight gloves here from Huntworth, and I have a good amount of feeling, but there's a lot of little straps and buckles and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, it'd probably be easier with just bare hands. I'm going to try it here. I've done it a lot with just bare hands, and it makes the life a lot simpler. I got the strap tied in here. All right, so I'm going to cinch it out of park mode here, and I'm going to start taking it over the backside of my saddle here. And none of this goes quickly. That's one thing I kind of, in, in playing with this and, and working with it, that none of this goes in a, in a quick fashion. You just got to take your time with it. I got my uh, retractable gear hoist here on the backside, which is quite bulky. Uh, it's a family made one, if you will. Uh, and so it, it's not meant for saddle hunting. It's meant for a guy going up and down a tree stand, having it to his backpack, but it works. Just take a moment here. I'm very comfortable. 
notice um, you know I'm just standing on my platform well away from the tree none of this is uncomfortable or unsafe in any way shape or form so at this point I think I'm gonna have to remove my glove I don't think I'll be able to reach in through here so I'm gonna go ahead and remove both my gloves here it's okay so this is the uh, interior exterior pocket so there was the exterior pocket now I can reach through here inside and now I can go ahead and uh, detach my carabiner here. I'm not going to undo this daisy chain, but instead I'm going to keep my hand through here. I'm going to pull this uh, bridge out just like so. And we'll just kind of leave it off to the side. I'm not even going to undaisy chain it just yet. I'm going to reach in here on the other side, do the exact same thing. And I'm going to pull the loop, my bridge loop here out through this pocket. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo this daisy chain. Now at this point I have my loop in here. I have this loop pulled through here so it's super simple to attach my bridge there. And now I can go ahead and do the tether portion here. And this bridge is not, you know, adjusted to anything. But now I'm fully tethered in here. And so now I can go ahead and start leaving out pressure on my lineman's belt. And I can go ahead and undo that. Before I go too hog wild, let's cinch that up a little bit. And now I'm officially tethered in to the tree via the saddle. And now I can then work this. And again, using these interior pockets here, I can go ahead and get it over. You know, if you've got dump pouches on your saddle, or in this case, I got that retractable gear hoist, it'll just snag up on all the insulation down there on the bottom. I don't know if I'll edit this out or not, if I'll just leave it in here. But just to show you this, you know, as complicated as it looks, this isn't bad. You know, I'm not like having to shimmy, shimmy, shimmy here. I'm letting gravity do most of the work. Using a nice platform like this, like the Predator or the, even the Predator XL, or if you use the Mission platform that's even bigger, this would work out really well. And at this point, these interior pockets are still quite large enough that if I need to uh, reach back in here and pull this saddle down, which I usually do, kind of loosen up the front. I have full access to the front here. Kind of loosen that up and I can really find the uh, area that I want. Both of my loops are now pulled out, so I can even, if I really felt like it on this Tethered Phantom, I could work on the comfort channel, which I'm gonna move this one over. And now I'm fully, uh, I'm fully tethered into the tree. And if I don't need my feet covered, now, I mean, everything's here, right? I have full mobility and come around the tree here. Here's this shot. I'm an over the bridge shooter, so I could do this. There's that shot here. I could do the drop shot. Right, so everything's still here. I still have full mobility, but the real question is what happens with the feet? Because <laughs> that's really the big selling point here. We'll see if I can do this at an angle so you can kind of see what I'm doing. If I need to, maybe I need to kind of pull this out a little bit. Really make sure it's nice and scooped, just like that. And what I do is all I do is lift my knee, get it inside, scoop it with my toe, bring it back onto the platform. So now I have one foot inside. I don't have to bend over, so I'll do that again. It's now out of the way. All I have to do is uh, scooch this up. If this is, you know, folded out on itself, all I have to do is just scoop it inside. Just a scoop like this. Lift up if I even want to, to really get that toe in there. Stand back on the platform. And now it's just a matter of just adjusting my weight. Putting the other foot in there. Just like so. Now that, even without zipping, will keep you much warmer than just having yourself open to the air. And again, I can still do all of my shots. Here's that shot here. Here's this shot here. Again, I'm an over the bridge user. There's that shot there, right? Just keep pivoting, right? This is just a pivot. You still have all the pivots, you still have all the shots. I can still feel the platform uh, underneath. Uh, these boots, these are from Hisea, but you know, they're the muck boot style. If you're using something even lighter, like a Crispy, Kenetrek, or a Danner type thing, work out just fine. Now, in order to zip it up, you're going to have to lower your uh, your tethered portion. But at this distance here, now it's just a matter of sitting down. So now that I have it fully zipped up here, all I need to do, I mean, again, all the motion is still there, right? So I can still pivot. I can still go around this side of the tree. I can still go up and around this side of the bridge. Everything is still there. 
there's plenty of room on a platform, a good size platform. You got the Mission, the new one from XOP, uh, the Predator XL. This is just the regular Predator. And I have size 12 boots, okay, and these they're insulated, so I definitely don't have a lot of room for air compared to most people. If you have like a size 9 or a size 10. But I can tell you right now already, here we are in the teens and plenty of windshield and I am completely covered, completely insulated. And I'll tell you what, I am super comfortable. Like I'm just in blue jeans and a, and a waffle thermal and I'm just like now warming up. I'm not even at my full warmth capacity yet. If I start getting the hoods, this storm hood, I love this storm hood. Now I wouldn't shoot with this and it really has an echoey feel to it, but all the wind that gets blocked off is fantastic. Now the wind right now is coming right in my face. I would much rather be obviously a little bit more angled so I get some uh, break from the wind here a little bit by the tree. But I mean, just everything's right here. I mean, everything's nice. I still have, this is another thing too, I'll take the gloves off so I can utilize it even more. I still have full access to the hand muff down here right really nice hand muff here uh, has the really nice elastic there on the edges of course has this full kangaroo pouch here uh, in the front so if i wanted to put my phone or something in there i can uh, here i still have both utilization of both the pockets up here and i actually could see myself right now my phone's in this pocket i could see myself using these pockets uh, in just regular hunting weather or if I'm gonna wear gloves or if I'm hunting with a firearm I don't need to have them down here down here would be great if you were sitting right so here I am uh, completely sitting this is super comfortable uh, and that, then they would be rested here in my lap even with my orangutan arms they're really down here I could see myself when I'm leaning being more like this uh, and actually having my hands above the bridge uh, in a manner like so down in here for when I actually go to lean up against the tree no wind whatsoever is touching any part of my body other than right up in here and of course if i was hunting with a firearm in particular you know wear the full face mask i think i'd rather use it as a gator i mean i guess i could shoot a bow like this wearing this more like a gator and then having a knit cap up top and then using this this storm hood here if the weather's real nasty oh yeah well i'll see you on a little bit <laughs> This is fantastic. Now, using this in tree stand would be the bee's knees. I mean, this is a tree stand right here. Sitting down up against the tree, hands in this muff. You got all the range of motion you can want. You could stand up, right? No, standing up is not an issue. You could pivot around, although I have the tree in the way, but you could easily walk yourself around. Even though that the, the feet portion is keeping me warm, it's not as much insulated as it is just keeping out the wind and keeping out the elements more than anything else it's not really a matter of insulation as much as it is just a matter of blocking so there's a lot of texture still through my boot into the material at the bottom of the eye while i'm into the platform so i really can feel like i can feel all the holes i can feel the texture of the cuts that are in on the edge of the platform again i can go on the edge of the platform i can go side load here my platform's not level, so I'm wanting to swing real bad. That's not the I one's fault. And even so, I don't really do full side pressure. I will always do one knee into the tree to limit that fulcrum. I talk about that in all my saddle videos. So what are my final thoughts in terms of using the IWOM, purchasing the IWOM? Who's the IWOM really meant for? One thing I'll say, it's a lot quieter than I anticipated out of the box. This material uh, is, is kind of a suede finish. You know, it has what you would expect, the sound of this kind of material. It's not Berber fleece, uh, it's not Sherpa, um, but it's definitely the same level of noise uh, as say, um, you know, any other hunting jacket on the market. My Huntworth stuff, for example, sounds like this. Good wind blocking material um, that doesn't add a whole bunch of price in terms of, you know, adding Berber or Sherpa on top to really deaden it down. It's no louder than anything else. So there's one factor there. Now, of course, people are gonna be wigged out by the price, you know, 400 bucks for the full suit, but you have to remember, and just like any other high-end piece of clothing, A, this is doing like 18 different things that the cheap stuff doesn't do, but more importantly, this takes over everything, right? I'm in blue jeans, a thermal top and $60 Hisea boots, and I am just as comfortable as if I'm wearing my Arctic Shield boot covers, my uh, La Paz uh, fleece thermals, my pants over top, my Huntworth stuff, my Sitka Fanatic jacket. You know, we're talking hundreds of dollars of gear, and this is, you know, basically half of all of that combined. 
um, and you don't have to have anything special on underneath. The only downside to that is that this isn't modular, uh, which of course for somebody like me who lives in the Northeast and I have a cold climate, I mean, it's been cold like this since basically late November, which of course is, you know, the rut, firearm season, all that stuff. So I live in hunt and weather like this. So if you live and hunt in a weather and a climate where it is cold, like the entire time uh this would be great this would be great for like ice fishing too like if you really i mean i've never been ice fishing but i can imagine with that waterproof bottom on the underside of the iwam how actually nice this would be for something like ice fishing uh if you live up in canada if you're a ground hunter if you do a lot of firearms spot and stock you can put it in park mode sit down uh you know put it up over your feet i mean there's a lot of benefits i think to that so the noise factor, not something I'm worried about. It's very quiet, it, definitely relatively quiet to everything else that's on the market. The price point, 400 bucks, but it replaces everything. Pants, jacket, thermal layers, windbreaker, everything. Uh, so, so kudos to it there. Um, and then I would also say that in terms of the mobility I have within the suit, like, you know, when you're in a sleeping bag, you can kind of feel a little bit cocooned. This seems to be tight in the right place and open in the right place. I can, can still use it with a bow, even though this saddle loop is getting in the way. You know, I mean, in this this thumb hole here, I don't have it utilized, but I mean, I've got a 31 inch draw in these freaking orangutan arms, and I can still get a full range of motion to anything definitely on my strong side, coming down here to this drop shot. I mean, I can cover, you know, that 80% of the tree that I'm expecting a shot to be on very simply. And again, going over the bridge, you know, this shot took that a lot. So, you know, in terms of my fears and my qualms about this being a saddle thing, this definitely works. Now, what I would really like to see is a kangaroo pouch here so I could use my fixed bridge. Uh, because right now I have a bridge underneath that's inside the iWOM that's not being utilized because I have a tethered phantom. But if you have, you know, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what saddle manufacturers make a single-sided fixed, one-side open bridge. I'm assuming H2 does, Tree Hopper, maybe Cruiser. Uh, there's definitely some on the market. Uh, but this, I mean, right here, this works. Uh, it's just not ideal because I'm carrying extra ropes into the woods that I don't need. All right, well, I'm done flapping my gums. Let's end this video. If you have any questions on the IWOM or anything else that you've seen here today or anything else that's on my channel, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, send me an email, or even leave a comment here on YouTube. And particularly if you have your own experience with using the IWOM or some other form of heater body suit, I would love to hear it from you. This is is a first experience for me. I'm very excited to try it here this late winter as we come up into that later, much colder season, particularly if I'm going to be on the ground during the firearms. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time. Let's do this. Let's do here.